Mike Smith recorded the drums for Effigy of the Forgotten in 1991 when he was just 20 years old. That album shaped what brutal death metal and slam is today and gave lineage to countless bands that wanted to emulate that style afterwards. Mike's innovative technique of simultaneous blast beats mixed with his extreme technical precision really put his sound in a category of its own. Always found that it was light. What you wind up hearing in, in mixes is more bass drum and hi-hat and all of a sudden the snare has disappeared because I can't keep that intensity or pound. It's winds up being a little light slap. Exploding onto the New York death metal scene with bands like Immolation and Baphomet, Suffocation crafted their own style and brought technicality and brutality to whole new levels. Listening to his drumming just on the first track of Effigy's Liege of Inferocity, you can tell how focused a musician Mike Smith is. As a multi-instrumentalist, he knows how to really complement the guitars with heavy bass patterns making catchy, intense grooves while preserving the musicality of this extreme genre. George Coleus, born in Greece 1977, the bulldozer of apocalyptic percussion behind Nile's massive sound. He's been full-time with the band since 2004 and also started the Extreme Drumming Department in Athens Modern Music School in 2006. He's released multiple instructional videos on what different techniques he likes to implement in his playing, such as using leg muscles for eighth notes, leg and ankle muscles for sixteenth notes, and for thirty-second notes he only uses ankle movements. You know, I, I heard this many times and people are like, uh, man, you look like you're pushing. I'm like, you know, this is why I am. <laughs> I'm pushing everything I have and yeah, people see it. Uh, see it. I think it's, it's, it's very obvious. But the other thing is what, what's going on in your mind, you know? I'm, I'm doing math and uh, some signatures will be really against the, the, the flow. Odd parts like uh, sevens and elevens and nines. And so there are many different factors. It's a really demanding style of music and um, I enjoy it, although I suffer. <laughs> He's written a book on extreme metal drumming. He's released a solo album where he wrote all the instruments, leads, and did all the vocals and continues to play clinics, teach countless students, and profess the holy teachings of extreme metal. Hailing from the darkest regions of Canada, Flo's playing has been garnering attention since Cryptopsy's debut, Blasphemy Made Flesh, in 1994. Flo takes an extremely technical approach to drums that require almost inhuman actions to perform. Maintaining control while experimenting with creativity are major driving factors in Flo's drumming. He likes to work on his dynamics with controlled movements of his wrist. It's his most powerful point of a striking movement and he uses that power to accent and add certain subtleties to his playing that extend the range of his capabilities. He wants to keep the insanity of the music he plays dynamic and articulate as possible while incorporating lots of non-metal influences. Most importantly is listening to other types of music and trying to get into it and trying to focus on well, you know, what is this? There's a lot of times when we did albums for Cryptopsy in the past where I'd be influenced by uh, Dave Weckl album, a certain thing that we did in, in a blast kind of, you know, version. But it's still those influences that kind of made me get away from, let's say, just, just the speed and, and, and just the, the, the sheer brutality of it and try to experiment with things in order to create something a little bit different.
Gene Hoagland is known for a multitude of reasons in the metal scene. He's tracked drums for a heap of bands and albums, including Death's Individual Thought Patterns and Symbolic, as well as tracking drums for the Death albums by Death Plot. He was able to showcase his incredibly tight and out-of-the-box drum styles with Chuck's jazzy influences in Death, while laying down more extreme and punchy patterns in Death Plot. The cartoon Metalocalypse exploded in popularity, and Gene got to show his drum abilities to the world on Cartoon Network practically every night for years. He also used to roadie for Slayer and even got Dave Lombardo's double bass foot technique in working order for haunting the chapel. Um, you know, I've always used big heavy weighted sticks or something, but these days I just, you know, three sticks. And this is a real decent way to just get the weight into your hands. Um, you know, the, the entire concept of my whole warm-up thing is to make things lighter, and that's one way that things become easier. Got the leg weights on, so, you know, I keep the leg weights on when I play. Um, I'll keep them on for six or seven songs, or whenever, you know, I'll keep them on until that hauling song. Pop off the leg weights, and that is a warm-up right there. You are good to go, you're ready to fly. It goes without saying that his presence and influence in metal will forever be held as legendary. Before we reveal the final pick, Here's just a few honorable mentions. Our honorable mention of the year goes to Sean Reimer, mastermind behind the progressive death metal band Cynic and the mad scientist of drums for the album Human by Death. I realized there was a lot of possibilities, or a lot of stuff like cymbal work that could go on top of these other beats instead of just playing the straight ahead thing. You have a mix of both, you have an intensity, a brutality, but then you also have a musicality and a subtlety to, to the playing that makes it uh, much more vibrant than just, just straight ahead, you know, aggression. Mixing metal drum techniques with fusion elements and other genres, Sean laid the groundwork for future death metal bands and became highly inspirational to many, really mixing up the idea of what it means to play heavy music. Sean passed away on January 24th, 2020, leaving a gaping void in the soul of the metal community, his family members, and all his fans. You will sorely be missed. Nice. Longsworth. 
the demented drummer that innovated the gravity blast and the double stroke foot technique in modern death metal, methods he used to keep up with his guitar player in origin. Though he can play like a machine gun, John is an insanely creative drummer that has an incredibly capable style suited to fit even the most intense out of box aspects of death metal. His work in Origin and Gore Guts is tremendous and so ferociously complex, it sounds as though he's fitting an entire album worth of drum ideas down in one song. He's also worked with bands like Angel Corpse, Dying Fetus, Exhumed, Hate Eternal, and Skinless. He's played countless clinics and holds down session work for several upcoming metal projects. His incredibly fast, varied, and surgically precise playing has made John one of the most respected drummers in modern metal, and with the contributions he's made to the death metal genre as a whole, it's no wonder why he's our number one pick for the list. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Is it, you know, triggering, cheating, two-footing, cheating, one-handed, whoa, is that, you know, cheating? If you're gonna sit there and just put a technique down, then you're just kind of putting your own musicianship down, your own credibility as an artist, as a musician. It's dumb. It's music. It's an art form. There's no rules. You're, you are supposed to commend this guy for using what he thinks is the better technique, what technique works for him. That's what makes him interesting, is by watching this guy and seeing what he does. That's why we all do this, because we can all do it a little bit differently. Was your favorite drummer on the list? Would you have put someone else as number one? Leave your favorite death metal drummers in the comments. And thanks for watching. I mean, how would you define yourself as a drummer? I try to play as many different styles as possible and, um, and work with many bands, uh, you know, session work, metal bands, hard rock bands. Actually, this is what I enjoy the most, to be honest. Because, you know, with my band, we play extreme stuff all the time. And when I get the opportunity to play for a heavy metal band or like a hard rock band, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I will do it, I will do it. Yeah, but we can't afford you to pay you like, oh, man, it's okay, you know. So uh, I would say extreme metal drummer, but uh, with uh, some all, all around uh, wishing, uh, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm.